site. Um, information, although the information is stored in the cloud, it's encrypted first on your machine before being uploaded. That's why it's secure. It's pre-internet encryption. It's encrypted before it leaves your computer. And it's using AES-256 encryption, which is perfectly good. So that encryption requires some type of cert or key to do the encryption. Right. So that's stored on your device? That's the password that is used to create the key. Using this also requires some sort of cloud, cloud storage, or is that optional? Uh, LastPass, <coughs> the way it works is it stores an encrypted blob in the cloud. That encrypted blob is not anything anyone can read if they don't have your password. Okay, well I understand that much, but I have to go through the trouble of getting a cloud account of some kind? Yeah, you would. And uh, LastPass is, they have free accounts, but I've actually gone for the paid account because it also, the paid account gives it to me on my phone. Cool. It's not. 10 15 dollars a year it's not a huge for me it's not a huge thing so the idea then is that um, you know in my case I can access this from any computer as long as I know my password <coughs> right. but what's stored in the cloud is just a, a binary blob of nonsense now keypass X stores your passwords locally in an encrypted database, which, you know, makes it available offline. Um, and that's why I store, for instance, my Wi-Fi password for home is in my KeyPass database. Because if I can't get online, LastPass isn't going to help me very much. I want to have something that's available offline. Uh, I, any important passwords will be in both of these. The belt and suspenders principle. I mean, what happens if, like, uh-oh, I suddenly forgot my LastPass password, I can't get any of that stuff. Um, I might want to know some of the important passwords. Again, you want a good password to protect this. So this is the, the bottom line, the best recommendation, long random passwords, uh, since by definition long random passwords are ones that you cannot memorize, uh, at least not very many of them. Um, use something like LastPass, KeePassX, or as I said, I use both uh, to generate and store passwords. And that will give you a pretty effective degree of security. And here's the famous XKCD. And, you know, Randall Monroe is a really smart guy. When he wrote this, I think it was true. So, he said, correct horse battery staple. It was a really secure password because it was long. Remember the math we did about long passwords? However, no, 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 it's no. made of words. Each one is only 16 bits wide. But the reality. whole string is the password, not any yeah, it's the one whole, word. whole thing together. But each word is only 16 bits. Yeah, but how are you supposed to define a word? Uh, this becomes a string of ones and zeros. So yeah. it will be ASCII encoded and all of that. Um, so he does some math about the bits of entropy and all of that. Now, um, as we saw, though, when I referenced that, I think it was Ars Technica, but whatever that article was, I showed you several slides back. There is no fate but what we make. It was cracked. So, I mean, basically, this worked until crackers got around to saying, well, let's just build an even bigger database that has every dictionary word in every possible combination of, you know, four, five, six, whatever they decided to got. I don't know exactly what they decided to do. And suddenly at that point, 
that's not secure anymore. You missed that cracker conference? Yeah. I like that <laughs> comment at the end there that uh, through 20 years of experience, we've taught people how to uh, use passwords that are hard for them to remember but easy for computers to crack. Right. Yep. So, that's that. And okay, great. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.